Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning in. Today is going to be a full whole body powerful vinyasa yoga flow and yeah we're going to get straight into it. Before I start just a quick reminder that if you haven't practiced with me before I am Molly and I run a online yoga membership Sweaty Soul Living where you can pay as little as 27 cents per day to get access to weekly live classes to um, an archive or a library of over 150 classes. These include meditation, yoga, workouts, workshops, handstand challenges, literally everything you can think of when it comes to strengthening your body, your mind, and improving your life on a whole. So if you want to join, if you enjoy this class and you want to join the membership, you can either pay a year up front, which is 99 euro, or a monthly membership of 1499 and um, which works out at about 30 something cent a day so yeah i hope to see you there for now let's get started we're going to start in child's pose so i'd like you to come onto your knees you can set up your knees either together or um hip width and we're going to just allow ourselves to settle in by tuning into the breath so extend your arms allow your elbows to relax and soften forehead to the mat or even forehead to block if that's more comfortable we're going to start to deepen the breath. So I want you to immediately notice the rhythm of your breath. Your breath will tell you a lot about where you're at, mentally, physically. You might notice that there's a lot of physical restriction. If the breath is only coming toward the throat and stopping there, you might feel like there's not a lot of space in your lungs, in your belly. And you might start to just soften or intend to bring a little bit of softness. Relax into the throat, relax into the upper back, the belly, the hips. Just heavy toward your heels. And if you find like it's a bit of a mental block, if you find like your mind is running a mile a minute, that's okay. Just maybe notice what comes to mind, what it is that is really stopping you from tuning into your breath and know that it'll probably be there later but after a yoga class it will be completely minimized and you'll have the tools the perseverance the focus the clarity and a sense of calm to face whatever challenge it is so let's come back to the breath deepen the inhale and exhale through the nose we're going to really tune into our inner power, creating some heat in this class. So just begin by keeping your forehead to the mat. And we're going to sweep our arms behind our back toward our lower back and just interlock the fingers. If this is too much, grab a strap. You're going to extend through your arms, extend through your knuckles, and just reach your arms back, hovering the hands above the lower back. Squeeze the shoulder blades softly toward each other, and you can even sway through um, the hands left to right, just moving into the shoulders, into the upper back. You can do anything that really feels good here for you. You might even lift your hips and roll onto the top of the head, lifting your knuckles higher, but really trying to keep that softness in the neck. Release the hands. Sweep them all the way forward, and then just walk all the way in. So use your hands to push your body up to sit sitting on your shins. So bring the knees together. We're going to bring a little bit of movement through the spine. So I want you to interlock your fingers and push the palms away. So palms face away. We're going to inhale, lift your arms all the way up by the ears, move them back in space as you pull your heart forward, almost like a cow belly. And as you exhale, you're going to push the hands out in front, tuck your chin toward your chest and round your back, just warming up through the shoulders and the back. Inhale to arch, cat cow here, seated. Exhale, push the hands out in front, round through the spine. One more time, inhale to lift up through the chest, push back through the arms. Exhale, extending it all the way out in front. Well done. Release the hands. We're going to come into downward facing dog. Well done. Plant the palms. So remember, hands shoulder width distance. Really be mindful that the knuckles aren't lifting away from the mat. You want the entire palm rooting down. Tuck your toes, lift your hips. By no means in a down dog do your legs have to be straight. It's actually, for me, 
way more enjoyable and way more strong to bend my knees because I have super tight hamstrings. So you want to really exaggerate the length of your spine and the strength of your shoulders and arms. You want equal balance between hands and feet. So make sure that if you feel a lot of weight in your hands, take that soft bend in your knees and almost like you're pushing your chest back towards your thighs, you eventually start to push the weight back towards your feet. So we're gonna take a few ripples through the spine. I want you to inhale, roll it forward into a plank. As you exhale, you're gonna soften your hips down towards your wrist into this modified upward facing dog. Then soften into your knees, bend your knees and push back into downward facing dog. We'll do that four more times. Inhale, roll it forward, shoulders over the wrist. Drop your hips, engage your glutes as you lift your chest. Modified up dog, bend your knees, downward facing dog. Three more times, inhale, bring it forward, drop the hips, engage the legs and the glutes, soften the knees, downward facing dog, last two. Inhale, bring it forward, dome into the back and then lift the chest, shoulders down the back, squeeze together, bend the knees, downward facing dog. Last time, arms stay poker straight this entire time. So you're really pushing the floor away, lift upward dog, exhale, downward facing dog. Well done. <clears throat> when you're ready, we're gonna roll it forward into plank. So I want you to bring your shoulders over your wrists, really push the floor away and exaggerate that dome in the upper back. So feel space between the scapula, squeezing into the glutes. Lift your lower belly up and in, knit the rib cage in. And we're gonna hover the right leg away from the mat. So I want you to hover the right leg. If possible, come onto your left fingertips. If possible, extend your left arm forward into this hovering, balancing plank. And then you're gonna slowly drive that right knee toward the right elbow, really slow. And then come into a fallen triangle. Drop your left heel, extend your right arm out, or right leg out to the left. Find the knife edge of the foot to the mat. Drive down through your feet as you lift up through the hips. Left hand comes to mat, tiger curl that right knee in and step it back into plank. We'll do the same on the left. Hover your left leg, push down into the left hand, get light onto your right fingers and then keep those hips nice and stable. Right arm comes forward, push the floor away through that left hand and then slowly bringing that left knee in toward the left armpit. Drop your right heel coming into that fallen triangle. Left leg goes out to the right, right arm goes up and over the right ear. Really feeling that right waist extend and then back into plank. Right hand comes down, tiger curl the left knee in and step it back into plank. Okay, we'll do that one more time each side. Left or right leg floats, left fingertips, left arm, right knee to right tricep, drop the left heel, extend the right leg out, left arm overhead and then back into plank. Reset, strong arms, well done. Feel the pelvis neutral, left leg floats, push the floor away through the left arm. Really feeling that left thumb, push the floor away, right arm goes forward. And then see if you can slowly bring left knee to left tricep, drop your right heel, nice fluid movement. Left leg extends out into your fallen triangle, drive those hips up, right arm extends overhead. And then right hand finds the mat, coming into your plank holding in your plank. We're gonna do this one more time and this time add on a little bit. So you're gonna float the right leg, float the left. You can be on left fingertips as well as an option to take that stepping stone. Right knee, right tricep, drop your left heel, extend out into that fallen triangle. And then we're gonna slowly hover the right foot, bring your right knee in, start to roll onto the left toes if you can. So see if you can make your way back in to that hovering plank. And then left fingertips find the mat, step your right foot all the way through between the hands into your kapiyasana. Drop the left knee down, low lunge, bring the arms all the way up overhead. Interlock your fingers, Kali Mudra the hands, engage your left glute, lift up and out of the waist. Feel that right outer hip hug back. I want you to really root down through the right heel here and the right inner foot. And imagine like that's pulling back or dragging back toward the left knee. As you do that, imagine the left knee is almost just pulling gently forward toward the right foot. And you're gonna feel that strength and zipping up of the inner thighs. We're gonna release from here, bring the hands toward the mat. You're gonna shift it back into your half split. So just warming up nice and slow. We've done a lot of heat building, so try to take this time to really slow down the breath. Breathe for three, hold for two, 
and one lizard lunge. You're gonna bend into the right knee, toe heel that right foot out so that you can bring both hands to the inside of the right foot. So I just want you to feel that chest extend forward. I want you to be a little bit intuitive here. So you can either stay on your hands, you could grab that block and come down onto your elbows. You might not even need the block. You might wanna come down all the way to the mat. Elbows find the mat. You might want to add in a twist, so you might want to open up toward the right, right hand to the knee. So anything that feels right here for you, I just want you to find a few breaths to slow things down. Breathe soft, relax the throat, relax the jaw. Okay, well done. We're going to come back up onto the hands, we're going to step it into a plank. So hands find the mat, you want to really find these the strength in these transitions. It's all about those little mini mini journeys from one pose to the next. It's like when you're on a backpacking trip, it's not always the destination, it's sometimes the journey there that offers all the, the funny stories or the um, interesting people that you meet. So try to look at your yoga journey, all these little transitions as times to really focus, times to really strengthen. Tuck your left toe, lift your knee, push the floor away, dome into your upper back, and you're gonna set up in your plank so that right foot steps back. I want you to come into extended plank, so really Really tuck your tailbone, engage your glutes, and walk your hands forward. So you're in this like, strong extended plank. Drive your triceps in toward each other. So eye of the elbow points forward, or crease of the elbow points forward, engage your quads. Slowly lower to, to forearm plank. So drop your elbows, hugging them in toward each other. Coming into this strong forearm plank, we're going to dip right to left. So right hip dips down a little bit, then left for 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, one. Dolphin, you're gonna walk your toes in. Well done. So just making sure that you're not all the way at the front of your mat, because we're gonna be shifting forward into chaturanga. But take a moment here, push down through your thumbs, and push your chest back towards your thighs, so burning out those shoulders. So what we're gonna do here, shoot forward into chaturanga. I don't want you to overthink it. Just imagine chaturanga, imagine those elbows hugging your side body, chest forward, gaze forward. Bend your knees, you can take a little bit of momentum, look forward and shoot forward into chaturanga. Up dog, down dog, well done. Okay, we're gonna do the same on the other side. Roll it forward into plank. So again, we're gonna hover left foot this time. Hover left, extend right arm, holding it here. Left knee to the tricep, drop your right heel, extend your left leg out to the right, right arm extends over the right ear, lift those hips, and then hover your left foot, Bend your left knee, drive your left knee to your tricep. You can come onto your right fingertips here if you need as you spin onto the right toe or keep your right arm forward and then fingertips find the mat, step your left foot forward. Coming into Kapyasana, low lunge. Sweep the arms all the way up overhead. Interlock your fingers, maybe getting opposite pinky finger on top this time. So see how that feels for you. It might feel a little bit unusual because we usually bring our habitual side over first. So just noticing that sometimes it can feel a little bit strange when you do the non-habitual thing, when you switch it up, when you challenge yourself to resist that habit. But then eventually the non-habitual thing becomes the habitual thing, okay? Just like starting any new healthy habit. When you're ready, hands find the mat. We're gonna shift it back, half splits. Okay, so driving down through that left heel, hug your outer left hip back, right hip moves forward, and just breathing here. So anything goes here, I want you to really tune in to just opening through the back body, extending your chest forward. Try to find that little bit of core strength as you pull your lower belly up and in. Well done, lizard, you're gonna bend into the left knee, toe heel, that left foot out and bring both hands to the inside of the left foot. So all of those options are there for you again. You're going to pull your chest forward, engage into the right glute. Breathe here. Remember you can come onto elbows, you can use blocks, you can add in a little twist if that feels good. Maybe you want to bring a little bit more action. If you're high energy today, you want to tuck the right toe, lift the right knee. Remember, even if I don't offer a modification, it doesn't mean it's not there for you. 
you want to tune into whatever feels right for you. Okay, so we're going to come back into that plank. So when you're ready, tuck your right toe, come to your hands, lift your right knee. And we want to set up that plank before we're even there. So push the floor away, dome into your upper back. Notice all that space that you're creating to hover the left foot and step the left foot back. Coming into that extended plank, so you can either slide your toes toward the back of the mat or walk your hands forward. Remember, wrap triceps in, crease of your elbow forward, slowly drop your elbows to the mat so it's a really slow lower. You might have to do one at a time until you build the strength to do both. We're going to come into our, delf, our, our side dip, sorry, so you're going to dip right and left for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and one. Now we're going to come into our dolphin. I want you to really think about index finger and thumb, the entire finger, the knuckle, pushing down into the mat as you push your chest back. Engage your core and then look toward your thumbs. You're going to shoot forward into that chaturanga. So this is going to help you with your hop backs as well. So bend your knees, look forward, shoot forward, elbows graze the side body, up dog, down dog. Well done. Okay, so when you're ready, we're gonna move through a little bit more of a standing series. Usually I would add in loads of sun salutations, loads of variations of Surya B, Surya A, but this is a short YouTube flow. You can get access to my longer classes on the membership. They're more hour-long classes, 45 minutes, 75 minutes, anything that you can think that you might need, it's there. But for now, let's continue. Right leg floats all the way toward this guy. Inhale, as you exhale, you're gonna step that right foot all the way forward. Warrior one, so foot steps between the hands, drop your left heel, sweep the arms all the way up into that warrior one. Hips are square toward the front of your mat. Nice and slow, so drive that <clears throat> outer left foot into the mat to push that left hip slightly forward and then just have the intention of that right hip bone moving slightly back in space zipping up through inner thighs we're going to bring those arms behind the back and interlock our fingers so humble warrior you're going to lean forward through the chest reach back through the arms and hold it here squeeze those shoulder blades toward each other breathe for three strong through the legs navel to spine for two and one, release the hands to the mat. Now we're gonna come into a three-legged dolphin. If this is too much, three-legged dog is perfect as well. Push the hands away into the mat, spin onto the ball of the left foot. As you sweep your right leg to the sky, you're gonna drop those elbows like you did before. We're then gonna do tiger curl knee to nose, so you lift both elbows at the same time. Shift forward plank, knee to nose. Well done. Bring it all the way back up. Three-legged dolphin, inhale. Exhale, shift forward, knee to nose. Three more, inhale. Exhale, shift it forward. Inhale, drop the elbows, right leg to the sky. Exhale, shift forward, last time. Drop elbows, sweep right leg all the way up. Shift forward, this time step right foot all the way through. What we're gonna do is get really light on the fingers. So I want you to just make sure feet are on separate tracks here. Square off the hip, so outer right hip moves back in space. And then see if you can come onto the middle finger tips. Palms face each other. So we're gonna sweep the arms back in line with the hips. Expand across your collarbones, holding it here. Pull your belly away from the thigh and really lift that left knee. Come up high lunge, crescent, inhale. Exhale, sweep it back at that diagonal. Arms go back, triceps engage again. Inhale, come up. Exhale, bring it back. Inhale, lift. Exhale, go back. Again, inhale, lift. Exhale, go back. This time we're gonna inhale, lift, and then bring hands to prayer at the heart. We're gonna twist toward the right. So I want you to, again to make sure those hips are square before you start twisting the spine so we get that lengthening of the entire axis of our spine. Lean forward at the diagonal and then twist. Hook that left elbow to the outside of the knee. So you wanna really get, whoop, try not to wobble like me. Really get that hooking sensation. There's a few options here. If this is too much, drop your left knee. You can even do the bind here from the dropped knee variation or the lifted knee. You can reach your right arm behind the back and then left hand underneath the right thigh, holding it here for three. Hug that outer right hip back for two. 
We're going to bring our gaze down. Now, loads of options here. The bind is obviously super challenging, but if you can keep the bind as you step the left foot forward, do. You're going to slowly step the left foot to the front of your mat and get light on the right toes. Shift the weight into the left foot and start to stand. Maybe you still have the bind, maybe you don't, don't worry. If you don't, really good way to strengthen is to keep the hands to prayer and push that right knee into the elbow and elbow into the knee. We're all going to release from the bind and then we're going to come into left hand to outer right knee, right arm goes back into the standing twist. If the option to extend the right leg is there, by all means you can reach down and grab for the right foot. <laughs> find your balance, find your drishti. I am wibble wobbling all over the place, but that's just the way it goes some days. Some days your balance is there, some days it's not. Hold for three, breathe for two. Windmill into revolved half moon, so release the foot. Right hand finds mat or block. So right hand is stacked underneath your shoulder, right leg goes back. I want everyone to bring their left hand to their hip and just push that left hip back slightly. And then you can either keep the hand to the hip, you could also just bring your hand to the flat of your back, make sure one hip isn't dipping lower than the other. And if you want, you can bring your left arm to the sky for three. Breathe for two. And one slowly twisted pyramid. So right hand slides back underneath the right shoulder as your right foot finds the mat. Twisting here for three. Breathe for two. You're on the ball of the right foot. Hips stay square. One. Left hand comes down for pyramid fold. So just folding over that left leg for three. Slow down the breath for two. And one. Warrior three. We're going to shift into the left foot. So bend the left knee. Slowly start to float that right leg. Slowly start to extend your arms forward or hands to prayer at the heart for three. Breathe into it for two. And one, I want everybody to really slow bend the left knee. Really slow, really slow. Until your belly actually is resting on the left thigh, then your hands can find the mat. We're gonna step it back into plank. Inhale in your plank. Exhale, halfway chaturanga. Up dog or cobra. Downward facing dog, tuck toes, lift hips. Straight into that left side, guys. No time to pause. Left leg to the sky. Sweep it all the way up. Exhale, knee to nose. As you shift forward, step the left foot forward. Drop your right heel wherever you're one. So feet are more so in line with your hips or heel to heel alignment, okay? So trying to give yourself that space to square off the hips. Breathe and sink into it here. Strong grounding through the back foot. And then slowly we're going to start to lean forward and bring our arms back. Interlock your fingers again. See if you can get that opposite grip. Extend back through the knuckles. We are coming into humble warrior. Floating our belly just over the left thigh. Breathe for three. Hold, squeeze shoulder blades together for two. Energy forward through the chest. Hug that outer left hip back for one. Release the hands. Hands find the mat. Three-legged dolphin or three-legged dog, remember. Two options. Push the floor away through the hands. As you drop the elbows, the left leg floats up. Inhale. Exhale, shift forward. Tiger curl. Elbows lift, knee to chest. Again, drop elbows. Lift the left leg. Exhale, really think about getting the belly or the leg as close to the belly as you can. Again, drop the elbows, elbows hugging in toward each other, left leg to the sky, inhale. Exhale, shift it forward. Inhale again. Exhale, shift it forward. Last time, well done, keep going. Exhale, step the left foot through. Four, this runner's lunge. So you're gonna make sure that the feet are on separate tracks. And we're going to get light on those fingertips. I want you to get those hands facing each other and come onto your middle finger. So really strengthening and firing up through the legs. And then when you're ready, you're going to sweep the arms back by the hips. So we keep the shape. We keep the engagement of the inner thighs. Strong through the back leg. Come up to high lunge. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, arms go back. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, arms go back, well done. Inhale, bring it up. Exhale, sweep it back, last two. Inhale, lift. Exhale, diagonal, last time. Inhale, lift. 
Exhale, sweep it back like you're moving through water. Inhale, lift this time. Hands to prayer at the heart. So we're going to come into a twist. We're going to lean forward. I know those legs are getting tired. And then hook the right elbow to the outside of that left knee. So make sure you're not collapsing the elbow onto the knee. You want to really pull your belly away from the thigh and get that contact to really twist from the navel. Lift your heart towards your thumb. So if you want to bind here, I'm going to demonstrate this time without the bind so that you can see what it looks like. You're going to hold for three. If you have the bind, great. You can also use a strap for the bind for two. For one, slowly bring your gaze down. If you have the bind and you can keep it, give it a go. You won't know if you don't try. Slowly shift the weight forward, step the right foot forward. You're going to immediately bring the weight into the right foot. So this is a great way to strengthen. You're going to come onto the left toes and slowly come to standing, pushing the knee into the elbow as you come all the way up. So holding it here and then releasing bind or elbow to knee contact. Right hand finds outer left knee, left arm goes back. Hold for three. You can also reach for the outer edge of the foot and extend the leg for two. Twist from the belly, don't pike up through the left hip. For one, revolved half moon. Really slow transitions. Remember, it's all about those transitions, that focus. Don't just jump to the pose, next pose. You wanna feel the transition. That's where the strength is. And then coming into that revolved half moon, hand to hip first right hand to hip to just guide it back in space. Left leg lifts as high as the hip, so don't sag it or that left hip will move with it. Hold for three, breathe for two, and one. Slowly, you're gonna step the left foot back, left hand slides back so that it's in line with your shoulder. Keep the twist here, right arm can come to the sky if it's not already there. Hug the outer right hip back for three, breathe for two. And one, right hand finds the mat folding into your pyramid fold. You can stay in the ball of the back foot or you can drop the heel, but lift your lower belly up and in for three. Engage your right quad, ground down firmly through the right, through the right big toe mound for two. Warrior three, gaze forward, bend into the right knee. You're gonna slowly start to shift the weight onto the right leg. Arms go forward or arms go back for three. Breathe into it for two. And slowly start to bend the right knee. Keep that left leg lifted. And then when the belly gets to the thigh, you can step the left foot back. We're stepping it into plank. Inhale, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Up dog or cobra. Downward facing dog. Holy Moses, you had done it. You have finished that whole body flow. We're gonna finish in a pigeon. We're gonna slide the right shin to the front of our mat. Right knee toward right wrist, tuck your left toe, and just slide that left knee back as far as it will go. Square off the hips. Make sure you're getting that opener in the right hip. You're breathing here, lifting the chest, sliding the shoulders down the back. If you need a block under the hip, by all means, to level it off, to find that foundation for yourself, do. If you want, you can come to elbows. You can even completely melt to the mat with your chest folding completely, your forehead grounding, but do whatever feels right for you. We're gonna soften into the shoulders, relax the neck and the jaw. It can be really nice to get that block and just rest your forehead on the block so that you're not trying to hold up the head with the neck. So it just gives the neck a little bit of a break. Try to imagine like that left femur bone is just gently hugging forward into its socket. And as you do that, you're kind of drawing the outer right hip back a little bit. So a little bit of action there. Let the rest of your body melt around that hugging in sensation. You can stay here for as long as you have time for, for the duration of the class. I'm going to slowly start to come out of it. We're simply gonna step it back either into a three-legged dog where you circle your right knee in one direction and then the other, do whatever feels right here for you. You might even flip your dog if you wanted, stepping the right foot behind you and finding that nice opening through the front of the body. And then we'll do the exact same on the other side. So from your downward dog, we're gonna slide the left foot forward. Well done. We're gonna slide that right knee back as far as is comfortable for you. So don't force it. There shouldn't be any pain in the knee. If there is, come into a reclined figure four shape. 
You can stay upright as you square off your hips, engage a little bit into the right glute. If you want to slide something under the left hip for support, you can. And then slowly, if you want, you can come down onto your elbows. You might come all the way down onto your chest. You might find a little bit of support for the head. You could even use your hands, bringing your chin into your hands, whatever feels right. The joys of filming in a city, there's lots of noise going on around us. And just come back to your breath. So slowly start to just tune in here. Breathe for three. Sink into it for two. Find that softness around the upper back, the shoulders, the neck, the jaw, the brow. For one, stay here if you want. Option to come straight into your three-legged dog. Bending the knee, opening the hip, maybe circling it out if that's what you need. And then option to step the left foot behind you into that wild thing if it serves you. And then making your way into downward facing dog. We'll slowly come to our knees. We'll slowly sweep our legs all the way around in front. So we're gonna come all the way down onto the back. And just make our way into Shavasana. If you have bolsters or blankets or blocks or anything that you'd like to use, by all means. And then we're just going to sink into this space of stillness. It might be super hard for some of us, especially after such a high power class, to immediately switch off. So if you have unrealistic expectations, we're often disappointment, disappointed and often that's where criticism and self-judgment comes in. So don't worry if you still feel your heart is racing, that your mind is still in that kind of high power movement energy phase, then just come to the breath, start there. Try to slow down the breath initially. So see if you can just softly, it doesn't have to be the biggest breath, it doesn't have to be the deepest, just soft inhale through the nose. Try to make it as slow as you can, as you feel it in the back of your throat, in your lungs, as it expands and spreads like butter into your belly. And then just watch its journey as it slowly leaves your body. Notice already how things start to just slow down, the heartbeat, the mind. I encourage you to stay here for as long as you can. You can pause and just stay for at least five to 10 minutes. And then you can rejoin by pressing play again to close class together. So slowly take a full body stretch, point toes, extend arms. Wiggle fingers, wiggle toes, stretch the face, and then keep the eyes closed as you roll over onto your side body into a fetal shape pause. Use your hand to push you all the way up to seated. Stack shoulders over hips. If you need a block, grab a block and just sit up tall through the spine. Keep the eyes closed and just acknowledge the effect of your practice. Well done for showing up today. Well done for having the intention to practice, which is very easy, and bringing action to that intention, which is very difficult. So well done. Nobody else could have done that for you. And I am so privileged to have been the person that you chose to practice with today. I will close with a quote, as always, by my favorite yoga teacher, Talia. The physical posture is made up of non-physical abilities, focus, will, determination, consistency, and patience. Look deeply into your body and you will find yourself. Bring your hands to prayer at the heart, bow your chin toward your chest, and honor your practice today. Namaste. 
Thank you so, so much. Everyone who joined in, who tuned in, and who stayed for the full class, um, and who didn't skip their Shavasana, it's very difficult. I know sometimes when you're so into uh, that do, do, do mode. Um, so thank you for practicing. I hope you enjoyed the class. If you did, please do um, subscribe to my channel because I have weekly classes or weekly videos that go up every week. And these include yoga, fashion, business, um, and much more. So thank you for joining in. And if you enjoyed today's class, I would really encourage that you try the seven day free trial on my yoga membership, Sweaty Soul Living. You can follow the link in the description box below and start today. What are you waiting for? Thank you and see you again soon.